I'm Tom. I've been a diabetic for over 30 years and since I was diagnosed I've been fighting high post meal blood sugars. And I think I won. I know you struggle with big blood sugar spikes after meal too. Otherwise you wouldn't have clicked on this video. But I want to help you. That's why I put together these 7 tips or strategies that helped me a lot to reduce my post meal blood sugars. Most of the tips I will be sharing today are applicable to both type 1 and type 2 diabetics. I'll start with the simplest things and move on to more complex strategies. Strategies. So if you want to get most out of this video, watch all the way to the end. Keep in mind I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice. I'm just sharing my personal experience. My first tip is simple. If you want to get rid of blood sugar spikes after meal, then stop eating foods with added sugars and consume less carbohydrates with your meals. Whenever you eat carbs, your body converts them into glucose and your blood sugar goes up. It's that simple. From my experience, meals rich in carbs and meals with added sugar are the number one reason why I see those blood sugar spikes after meal. Here is what added sugars can do with your blood glucose line. See the massive spike? And here is what a meal rich in carbs can do. A little bit less steep but still a spike. And it sounds crazy to me that according to a recent study the average American adult gets 47% of calories from carbohydrates and 22% of calories from added sugars. And I know many people who switched from the standard American diet to a low carb diet or eliminated carbs completely and switched to a ketogenic diet. Their blood sugars improved dramatically. Some of them get a straight blood glucose line just like this since they made the change. The biggest and most inspiring proponent of a low carb diet that I know is Dr. Bernstein. A type 1 diabetic diagnosed at the age of 12 who at his 87 years of age is still staying healthy, still working at his diabetes clinic and living a full life with this chronic condition. Dr. Bernstein recommends the low carb carb diet to type 2 diabetics as well and he claims that you can reverse type 2 diabetes using this approach. He suggests eating no more than 30 net grams of carbs per day, 6 grams for breakfast, 12 grams for lunch and 12 grams for dinner. And here is a list of foods that are allowed and not allowed, which can really help you prepare your meal if you want to follow his approach. Now I'll be completely honest with you, eating low carb is not easy and keto is even more extreme because you're not allowed to eat any carbs. I try to follow low carb diet most of the time, but I'm not as strict as Dr. Bernstein. I like to splurge a bit from time to time. And in my opinion with the technology we have today, we can afford to eat carbs more often than Dr. Bernstein could when he got his first glucometer. So my second tip is when you do eat carbohydrates choose the right kind of carbs. The trick is to look at the glycemic index or GI. GI is a number from 0 to 100 that is assigned to each food and that represents the relative rise in the blood sugar level two hours after consuming that food. The higher the GI number is the faster your blood sugar spikes. So I always try to pick foods with lower GI whenever possible. I started replacing grains with legumes and some starchy vegetables with green vegetables and it made a big difference. My blood sugars has been rising much slower since I made those changes to my diet. And here is an overview for you to give you an idea about the glycemic index of foods you probably eat quite often. The green ones are the good ones and the red ones are the bad ones. You can see that legumes like kidney beans or lentils and green vegetables like zucchini or broccoli Although they still have carbs, they are doing much better than things like white rice, white bread or potatoes. Another thing that works really well for me is incorporating foods with high fiber content into my meal plan. Dietary fiber helps lessen the spike in my blood sugars after eating because it slows down digestion. It also makes the whole digestion process more efficient and it can help you feel full sooner. And if you count carbs like me, you should definitely talk to your doctor to see how to account for fiber in your meal. What I usually do is I deduct the fiber content from my carb count to get to the net carbs number in my meal. Now all the things I covered so far are related to diet and what you can eat to avoid those high blood sugar spikes. But what if you want to throw a cheat day from time to time and go to a Chinese restaurant and get a really unhealthy food loaded with carbs. By the way I do that too from time to time and here is a very easy and effective
intuitive tip that allows me to do that. Whenever I eat a really carby meal, I try to take a walk right after I leave the restaurant. Sometimes I do a half an hour walk, sometimes an hour and sometimes even more and it really works wonders. If you do that, I guarantee you that your blood sugar spike will be much smaller. It is really effective, really healthy, perfectly natural and very cheap. Unlike any other diabetes medication, walking is free and just like any other physical activity, it can also improve your insulin sensitivity. Now speaking of diabetes medication, all people with type 1 diabetes like me need insulin to survive. The tips I described so far can help us reduce the amount of insulin we need to take, but we cannot eliminate it completely because our bodies don't produce insulin at all. We still need to take it. So before I go to my next tip on how to avoid blood sugar spikes, I want to talk about the fact that unfortunately insulin is not available to everyone in the world. Some people just can't afford it. And that's why I want to give a non-sponsored shout out to T1 International, which is a non-profit that supports local communities so that everyone can get access to insulin and diabetes supplies. I really like the way folks at T1 International go about their charitable activity. They don't take any donations from big pharma corporations. And that's why I decided to donate one dollar for each like you drop under this video until the end of 2021. Each like under this video gets one dollar to T1 International and I will add the link for you down below so that you can learn more about T1 International and join me by donating directly to them as well. Another way how you can support T1 International is to get this t-shirt from the Diabetic Survivor online store because profits from sales of this t-shirt go directly to T1 International. By the way my friend the Diabetic Survivor has other really cool designs on his website. So check it out and don't forget to use my discount code down below. The next series of tips on how to avoid those blood sugar spikes are for those who use insulin. Guys, you absolutely need to count or at least estimate carbs in each meal that you eat. And you should be using your specific insulin to carb ratio that your doctor should provide you with to calculate how much insulin you should take with that meal. But even if you do calculate your insulin dosage correctly, your blood sugars might still spike. Why? Well, because the meal may rise blood sugar faster then the insulin starts working and prompts cells to absorb that sugar for energy or storage. And there are two ways you can avoid this. The first one is taking your insulin earlier aka pre-bolusing and the second one is getting a faster insulin. Yes, you heard me right, a faster insulin. But let's talk about taking the insulin earlier first. How much earlier should you take it? Well, this might be different for everyone and it also depends a bit on what kind of meal you are eating. But the rule of thumb that worked for me with rapid acting insulin was 15 minutes. I know that when I take rapid acting insulin, wait 15 minutes, and then eat my lunch, my blood sugar spike will be very small. But I can tell you this is very difficult in real life. Inject the insulin, wait exactly 15 minutes and exactly 15 minutes later start eating. Sometimes I didn't wait because I didn't have enough time and my blood sugar spiked or I waited too long and my blood sugar dropped before I started eating. It just never worked 100%. But then my doctor suggested I could try a faster acting insulin. This happened like two months ago and it proved to be exactly what I needed. I switched from Humaloc, which is already a rapid acting insulin, to Lumjev, which is even faster. With the new insulin, I don't need to pre-bolus anymore. I just take my insulin and I eat right away and my blood sugar just doesn't spike. Sometimes when I eat meals with lower glycemic profiles, I even need to use the extended bolus function on my insulin pump. That's how fast the insulin is. Lumjev, however weird the name may sound to you, proves to be a great option for my automated insulin delivery function on my insulin pump as well because it can react much faster when my CGM starts indicating that my blood sugar is rising or dropping. By the way CGM is another great tool that you absolutely need to get rid of your blood sugar spikes after meal but if you've been watching my channel for a while you probably know that. Now please don't get me wrong I'm not saying that you should now run and change your medication I'm just saying what worked for me. You should definitely talk to your 
doctor first before you make any changes to your treatment, not listen to some random YouTuber. And another thing that helped me avoid those nasty blood sugar spikes was eating my favorite low spike meals. If you want to know what they are, click on this video and to watch it now. If you want to connect with me directly, then sign up for my Patreon. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Ciao.